Hello everybody, welcome back to another Blender tutorial, and this is actually going to be a three-part series. Uh, first is going to be modeling, then we're going to do one on rigging and one on animating. Uh, it's been the most requested topic, and well, obviously as you all know, I'm only in this for the YouTube views and for the money that comes with YouTube views. So of course it makes sense to make content that people are requesting because that's most likely to be watched and therefore most likely to bring me in ad revenue. It's actually not the reason, but um, we'll go with that. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to model a little something in this video. And then in the next video, we will be rigging it. And in the final video, we will be animating it. Now, it's always a good idea when you decide on something you want to make to kind of have an idea of what you want before you start. I have an idea. I didn't really make any sketches or anything. I would recommend that you probably make some sketches before you start off on things just because it makes it a whole lot easier to kind of have a reference to go off of and things like that. So basically what we got is a cube here and I'm going to actually be turning this into a scorpion-ish of sorts. I'm thinking this is probably good. Now one thing I do want to point out because this is uh, kind of intended for people that are using this to make mods for mine tests is this outer cube here, which actually I should make not selectable, is, well, no, of course I can't go into edit mode, is actually four cubes. It's still the height of one cube, but it is two cubes long, two cubes wide. Uh, I figure I'm going to have this scorpion a little on the larger side, just for funsies. So this is kind of the body here what I've got going so far and let's go ahead and make a leg now I'm gonna use a lot of time-lapse in this video I'm gonna try to use a lot of time-lapse anyway because I think otherwise this is just gonna get really long so or what I, I didn't mean time-lapse I'm just gonna do a lot of jump cuts I don't know how to do time-lapse so basically what we've got going on here is the the workings of a leg Oh, that's front view. No wonder why. I was like, this is looking really way too big. I didn't want to do that. Let me try this. And I'm going to get the top face. Arrgh. Let us change our selection mode to vertice. There we go. So he's going to have six legs. Six legs? Yeah, I think so. I can do a lot of this afterwards. All right, so here is the first chunk of the first leg. Now, I'm gonna switch back into face select mode. I want it to stay in wireframe. And we are going to delete out the inner face of the leg here, because that's right up against the body and we'll never see that face. So we'll keep the poly out of there. I'll make UV unmapping and other things just a little bit easier. And we're actually gonna make it stick out a little bit longer and the four faces there will end up pulling into the body or the four vertices why do i keep hitting z all right so let's go ahead and select these and put them into the body now this is going to end up being slanted kind of like that but the bones will do that for us and then you know i'm just actually going to duplicate this shift d to duplicate and we'll just shove it there and rotate it 90 degrees and i'm going to put it right here I think is how I'm gonna do this so now let's switch this to solid mute mode all right so we've seen that we're gonna have a problem with Z buffering here Z Z indexing whatever there's two faces that share the exact same space that is not a good thing to have so to combat that we'll just select all those faces and we'll just scale this down a little bit just like so and you know what Let's go ahead and scale this one up just a little bit. There we go. Now we won't have any issues with that. Now, of course, we could have unwrapped this before we decided to go ahead and mess up the layouts where we wouldn't have squares. That's totally up to you if you want to do things that way. I probably should have, but I didn't. All right, control E to bring up the menu here and mark seam. And you know what, let's go ahead and mark all the seams for the body. I am not going to really get too much into 
UV unwrapping or anything in this video as far as like creating the textures and doing all the unwrapping stuff there. But we will look at kind of the basics here. So again, we're just pretty much taking something and putting seams on it so it can be cut flat and put onto a piece of paper, more or less. And I think if I do this and make a U shape at the end there and unwrap this, there we go. We now have the leg. And as you will notice, it kind of has that curve going to it because I scaled it. If you want, you can do it before you scale it. You know, if you want to keep things square on your UV mapping, because I'm not too worried about it. I'm just going to do it that way. All right, so now we have UV mapping on that. And I'm going to go ahead and put the rest of the legs on here. And then I will be back. Okay, so that didn't take very long at all. You'll notice that these legs are sitting inside the body. I wanted to show you how to flip this. Just because, whoops, wrong place. Just because it's something helpful. It'll keep the UV mapping the exact same for all the legs. Otherwise, if I just rotate this like that. Now I have seams on the front on one side and on the back on the other side, which would mean a texture that faces forward here is going to be facing back here. And of course, we don't want that. Now, if you did want it, well, I mean, that's fine. So what we're going to do is go to mesh. And there's an option in here someplace that says mirror. And we want to select which axis we want to mirror on. Okay, let's try all right, I guess X is the correct option. And we'll just scoot that out. And there we go. The legs are all in place. And you will notice these legs look a little funky. Let's go ahead and go to shading UVs and recalculate normals. And all that was going on there was the normals were pointing inward. Probably because of the flip that I did. All right, so here's his body. Um, I'm going to give this thing a little head and I'll just do it in edit mode. Uh, you can make objects outside of edit mode and then join the objects by doing control J, I believe it is, but, uh, I'll just do it within edit mode. It's easier. All right. So this thing's head. Now I know a scorpion would probably have like long arms with pinchers. Not this guy. He's a mutant scorpion and does not get pinchers. I'll have some other freakishly spooky characteristic to him though. I think I might give him some kind of chompers or something. I don't even know yet. As, uh, as you can tell, I've made tons of plans in advance as to what I want this to look like. All right, so there he is. I'll probably just do some little mandibles or something, but I'll do that off camera because it's going to be a lot of putzing around to figure out what I actually want to do. All right, so body, legs, now it needs a tail. Now the tail on this, um, I don't really know what I'm going to do. I'm just making a lot of cubes and kind of figuring out as I go. I'm going to go ahead and switch back to wireframe mode. I'm going to move that out so I don't accidentally select anything wrong. Okay, first things first. The tail should only be as wide as the body. Um, obviously, the tail should not be wider than the body is. And the tail should be very short. It's going to be a segmented tail, as scorpions have. So it kind of makes sense to do that. Um... I don't know. How do I want to do this? And this is where sketches and planning come in so helpful. But you know me. Who needs that stuff? So we're just gonna just gonna wing it. All right. So here's our first tail segment. That looks really plain. Let's spice it up. Let's do a loop cut here in the center, uh, in the center, hitting control. 
And then we'll hit scale and shift up a little bit. Maybe like that. Control plus to enlarge selection. And we'll bump that right up there. Shift D to duplicate. And then we're going to scale this down. You know, we'll do 0.75. So we can just hit 0.75 on the numpad and it will do everything for us. And then we just bump that up. It sits inside a little bit, which is actually good. And we're going to duplicate this again. And you know what? Let's do a 0.75 reduction on there. I don't know why this isn't working. Maybe I accidentally turned off Num's lock. 0.75. Yes, I did. All right. And we'll do that one more time. And now actually, in retrospect, I should have UV unwrapped this first. Because then every single one would just share the same texture. And I wouldn't have to do multiple unwrappings. Oh, well. That looks horrible. I don't like that at all. The tail starts too wide. Fortunately, easy fix. We'll just go into vertice mode here. And we'll select all those and then go back and select that one that we missed. And let's just scoot that in. Let's do point one. And then let's go ahead and select all of those and the one right there. And we'll do the same thing there. So now the tail's narrower. I don't really like that tail at all. I need to do something different with that. That looks like garbage. Well, that'll work for now. It's got an ugly tail. I'll make a whole new tail and I'll do something with the face. But I'll do that off camera. So there we have our basic thing modeled. Um, really not a whole lot to modeling it. Just putting objects out and manipulating them, shifting them around, and making them into the shape we want them to be. So that's going to wrap up this video. Be sure to check into the next episode in which we will be rigging this. And then the final episode where we will be doing some animations, which I know there have been a lot of requests for. So I hope you guys all turn in for that. And yeah, I'll see you then.